A table full of tech can only mean one single thing. We're going to build a new PC today. And in fact, it's going to be a pretty high hand, as you can see from all the goodies on this table. Let's start from the left, going to the right. As for the case, I've chosen the Bitfenix Prodigy M2022. Paired with 700 watts PSU from Thermaltake, it has RGB, it's going to look awesome in this build. AMD Ryzen 5600, amazing CPU still, even if it's last gen. 32 gigs from Viper, still RGB. An RTX 2080 from Palit, the Gamerock edition. And for the motherboard, the B550M from Aorus. Enough talking, let's change perspective and start the build. We need to install the CPU, first of all. So, let's crack it open. This is an AM4 socket, which means we need to align this little triangle to the triangle on the socket right here. Super easy, we pull this lever out. We insert the CPU aligned by the triangle and we just close it, just like that. Next up, we're going to install the RAM. If you're using only two slots, you need to populate the second and the fourth one as it's written right here directly on the motherboard. But today we're going to populate all of the slots. So let's open them up. Let's take all the RAM sticks we've got 3600 megahertz from viper the steel rgb they look fantastic on this motherboard and they grant the best performances possible for this platform only thing you need to be aware of is these small teeth you need to align this to the slot on the motherboard of course so let's do just that and let's press it down don't be afraid of breaking it you're not going to break it if the tooth is aligned, you just need to press it. Even if it feels like you're going to break it, you're not. So let's press them down and boom, done. Next up is the NVMe. I'm currently going to use the Kingston KC 3000 two terabytes. This is my personal one. I'm going to actually install a one terabyte Gen 4 NVMe right here. But right now I don't have it, so I'm going to use this one. Super easy. Only thing you need to do to install it is push it in place. One suggestion, populate it from the top to the bottom, because some motherboards use a SATA slot for the secondary NVMe, so you're not going to get the full potential. Screw it in place, just like this, and it's done. For the thermal paste, we're going to use the Arctic MX-5. You can't go wrong with it, it's perfect. We can now place a notch, a rice-shaped beam right here. That's more than enough. We're going to align the screws with the holes and we're going to screw them down in an X shape, which means this one, the opposite, the one next to it, and the opposite screw. Not completely screwed down, but a little bit. And then you're going to do it multiple times until it's fully screwed in place. Remember to insert the cable into the CPU fan adder, otherwise it won't work, so pretty pointless. Right here it's written CPU fan, so you can't go wrong. We need to now install the power supply, so let's open the case, remove the front panel right here, and also remove this socket right here. This case has the peculiarity that the PSU goes here, but the power in inlet is right on the back. So there's an extension cable hidden underneath it. We can remove it. Let's screw down the plate right here. First screw in, second one, third one, and the last one. We can now replace the PSU inside it. Back in place, 
let's screw it down. I'm going to make a little bit of a cable management before we install the motherboard so that it's going to be easier for me to actually build it. And it's gonna look clean. Let's insert the motherboard with all the components. We need to pass first the IO shield and right here. I've already routed a couple of cables, but I'm going to do that off camera because it's freaking boring. So let's screw it down. We now need to install this beast of a GPU. But first we need to unscrew the panels right here. So let's do just that. And it's going to take two slots. So let's remove two of them. Let's unclip this plastic piece and let's place the GPU in place. It fits at the millimeter because it almost occupies the entire case, which means that most likely a uh, 4090 or even 3080 won't fit in a case like this. So be aware of that. Now I'm going to cable manage all this mess and you will see the final result of this build. Let's get into it. Here's the final result of this build. I'm extremely satisfied with how it turned out, both aesthetically and performances, because I can do 4K 144 basically on every game, esports even 200, 300 FPSs depending on the game, triple A titles between 80 to 100 FPSs in 4K, everything maxed out. But let's now talk about money. I've built this PC to flip it. I've paid 700 euros, not considering the case, because it was sent over by Bitfenix. Thanks so much, this is so cool. But the case is around 100, 120 euros. Here you can find the complete breakdown of all my expenses, but I'm going to sell it for 1100 euros. So I'm going to have a margin of 300 or 400 euros, depending on if you consider the case or not. I'm super happy. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment. If you've liked this video, you should definitely subscribe to my channel because I'm going to do many many more in the future like this one activate the notification bell if you don't want to miss any future video and i'll see you in the next one <laughs> ciao